Day tribute here in downtown Ashland. And where more fitting is a tribute to mother under the biggest mother in the country right here, the Mother's Memorial. Not too many years ago when Mayor Kane started this, it was a decision you had to make before you left the house. Do I need an overcoat, a snow shovel, or an umbrella? So, God willing, today the decision was made very early, normal attire. At this time, my dear friends, I would like to bring up a good friend of mine, Pastor Dana heckman Bild, for our invocation from the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and Heavenly Father, you have created mothers with a halo that reflects a life of wisdom and kindness and caring, eyes that sparkle with pride and show how much she believes in her children, shoulders that have been slept on and wept on and carried a world or two, arms that never, ever, ever run out of hugs, hands that know just when to hold on and when to let go, and a mind filled with amazing things from fairy tales to family tales, and a smile that can just jump right into your heart and warm you faster than hot chocolate. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of mothers, a heart of gold that holds more love than can possibly be imagined. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Very well said on this very special day. Our first reading, my dear friends, it is titled, Why Mothers Cry, read by Jack Kempsey. Why, mother Why mothers cry? Why are you crying, he asked his mom. Because I'm a mother, she told him. I don't understand, he said. His mom just hugged him and said, you never will. There, the little boy asked his father why mothers seemed to cry for no reason. All mothers cried for no reason, was all his dad could say. The little boy grew up and became a man, still wondering why mothers cry. So he finally put in a call to God. And when God got on the phone, the man said, God, why do mothers cry so easily? God said, you see, son, when I made mothers, they had to be special. I made their, so their shoulders strong enough to carry the weight of the world, yet gentle enough to give comfort. I gave them an inner strength to endure childbirth and the rejection that many times comes from their children. I gave them a hardiness that allows them to keep going when everyone else gives up and to take care of their families through sickness and fatigue without complaining. I gave them the sensitivity to love their children under all circumstances, even when their child has hurt them very badly. The same sensitivity helps them to make a child's boo-boo feel better and helps them share a teenager's anxieties and fears. I gave them a tear to shed. It's there exclusively to use when it's needed. It's their only weakness. It's a tear for mankind. Thank you, Jack. Very well done. And if I might date myself, Jack Kempsey, the grandson of the famous Patrick Kempsey, who taught me at Cardinal Brennan. Many years have passed. It's almost 40 to the dot. Our next part is also very interesting, year after year, with the subtitle of, My Mom is the Greatest Because. My Mom is the Greatest Because She is a Good Cook. I Like It by Hayden Wagner. My mom is the greatest because she never judges me even if I make bad choices. She will always love me unconditionally. Janina Coles. My mom is the greatest because she plays with me and she helps me when I need help. I love her because she does that. That's why she is the greatest. Kirsten Heiser. My mom is the greatest because she does everything in the world for me and she loves me with all of her heart. Aiden Conti. 
My mom is the greatest because she feeds me good food, she plays with me, and she gives me lots of hugs and kisses, and she is good to everybody. Kylie Exta. My mom is the greatest because she gives me hugs and good treats. Andrew Griskowski. My mom is the greatest because she loves me all the way up to God. Joshua Huffman. My mom is the greatest because she gives me lots of loving and she gives me a safe place to stay. She buys me lots of pretty things and she is the best mom ever. I love her lots and lots. Maddie Matrician. My mom is the greatest because she is nice and she cares for me. Tyler Wall. My mom is the greatest because she takes me places. Jason Love. Our next reader, When God Created Mothers, read by Brooke Antolowski. Why God Created Mothers. When the Lord was creating mothers, he was into his sixth day of overtime when the angel appeared and said, you're doing a lot of fiddling around on this one. And the Lord said, have you seen the specs on this order? She has to be completely washable, but not plastic. Have 180 movable parts, all replaceable, run on black coffee and leftovers, have a lap that disappears when she stands up, a kiss that can cure anything from a broken leg to a disappointed love affair, and six pairs of hands. The angel shook her head slowly and said, six pairs of hands? No way. It's not the hands that are causing me problems, said the Lord. It's those three pairs of eyes that mothers have. Is that on the standard model, asked the angel. The Lord nodded his head. One pair is that sees through closed doors when she asks, what are you kids doing in there, when she already knows. Another here in the back of her head that sees what she shouldn't, but what she has to know. And of course, one's here in the front that can look at a child when he goofs up and say, I understand and I love you, without so much as uttering a word. Lord, said the angel, touching his sleeve gently, come to bed tomorrow. I can't, said the Lord. I'm so close to creating something so close to myself. Already I have one who heals herself when she is sick, can feed a family of six on one pound of hamburger, and get a nine-year-old to stand under a shower. The angel circled the model of the mother very slowly. It's too tough, she sighed. But tough, said the Lord excitedly. You cannot imagine what this mother can do or endure. The angel then asked, can she think? Not only think, but she can reason and compromise, said the creator. Finally, the angel bent over and ran a finger across the cheek. There's a leak, she pronounced. I told you, you were putting too much into this model. It's not a leak, said the Lord, it's a tear. What's it for, asked the angel? It's for joy, sadness, pain, disappointment, loneliness, and pride. Lord, you are a genius, said the angel. The Lord looked somber and said, I did not put it there. Thank you very much. My back hurts. Our next reader, we have one from the fourth grade and one from the sixth grade. The subtitle, Why Every Day Should Be Mother's Day for My Mom. From the fourth grade, Savannah Widener. I love my mom because she, because when I am sick, she's there for me and she gives me medicine. I really, really, really love my mom. She is the nicest mom ever. She loves me so much. She takes me places and, tell, and lets me get something. Very good, thank you. Dennis, that's the way the council meeting should go real quick. From the sixth grade, Annalisa James. My mother, Jacqueline James, is a fabulous and wonderful mother. She has three children. I am the older I am older than my two brothers. She works in the ER as a nurse. She loves to watch SpongeBob, iCarly, Victorious, and Zoe 101. My mother does so much for me and my brothers. She cooks some of my favorite foods and she cleans. She does the laundry and helps me with my homework. She helps me understand life by punishing me when I do something bad. She always says she loves me and said she will never hate me. I can count on my mom if I need help with anything. My mother works as a nurse at the Pottsville Hospital. She helps people who are hurt. She saves their life and sometimes she can't, but she cannot help that. I think of my mom as a hero, someone who saves people's lives. She doesn't work that much, but 
When she dies, I know it is just that she wants us to have a good life. My mother likes the people that she works with. My mother likes to watch cartoons. She actually likes to sit down with me and my brothers to watch some. She says, she says she enjoys them instead of doing work. I think my mom is pretty cool. I don't know a lot of parents that watch cartoons with their children. I love my mom and my dad. She is the best mom I could ever have. I hope someday I grow up just like her. My mom is the greatest. She always makes me laugh and it is very fun to be with. That is why every day should be Mother's Day for my mom. Thank you very much. Our next reader will have a subtitle of Love You Forever, read by Kira Marlowe. Love You Forever. A mother held her new baby and very slowly rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she held him, she sang, I love you forever, I like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. The baby grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was two years old. And he ran all around the house. He pulled all of the books off the shelves. He pulled all of the food out of the refrigerator. And he took his mother's watch and flushed it down the toilet. Sometimes his mother would say, this kid is driving me crazy. But at nighttime, when that two-year-old was quiet, she opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of his bed, and if he was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. While she rocked him, she sang, I love you forever, I like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. The little boy grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was nine years old and he never wanted to come in for dinner. He never wanted to take a bath. And when grandma visited, he always said bad words. Sometimes his mother wanted to sell him to the zoo. But at nighttime, when he was asleep, the mother quietly opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, and looked up and over the side of the bed. If he was really asleep, she picked up that nine-year-old boy and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I love you forever, I like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. The boy grew, he grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a teenager. He had strange friends and wore strange clothes and he listened to strange music. Sometimes the mother felt like she was in a zoo. But at nighttime when that teenager was asleep, the mother opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor and looked up and over the side of the bed. If he was really asleep, she picked up that great big boy and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. While she rocked him, she sang, I love you forever, I like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. That teenager grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was a grown up man. He left home and got a house across town. But sometimes on dark nights, the mother got into her car and drove across town. While all of the lights in her son's house were out, she opened his bedroom window, crawled across the floor, and looked up over the side of his bed. That great big man was really asleep. She picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I love you forever, I like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Well, that mother, she got older. She got older and older and older. One day, she called up her son and said, you better come see because I'm very old and sick. So her son came up to see her. When he came in the door, she tried to sing the song. She sang, I love you forever, I like you for always. But she couldn't finish because she was too old and sick. The son went to his mother. He picked her up and rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he sang the song. I love you forever, I like you for always, as long as I'm living, my mom you'll be. When the son came home that night, he stood for a long time at the top of the stairs. Then he went into the room where his very new baby daughter was sleeping. He picked her up in his arms and very slowly rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, he sang, I love you forever, I like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be.
Very good, very good. Yeah. Now before I read the next couple, just reflect for the parents, maybe the parents of the parents, many years ago, the TV commentator and show host Art Linkletter, whose famous line was, kids say the darndest things. And that might be evident in the next few paragraphs. We have now the best thing my mom ever did for me. The best thing my mom ever did for me is help me walk and talk. If she didn't teach me, I wouldn't be able to do it. By Megan Booty. The best thing my mom ever did for me was, well, my mom does great things every day, but I'll pick a few. My mom takes care of me when I'm sick. She took me to the hospital when I was dehydrated and got me a fish. <laughs> my dad and her put a roof over my head and get me a good education, and I appreciate that. The thing is, moms do great things for us every day, and we should do the same. Alexa Prosik. The best thing my mom ever did for me is love me and give me a happy life. Cheyenne Rosa Bell. The best thing my mom ever did for me is taught me the rules when I was little. My mom taught me to use manners. She taught me to help other people. She taught me to love and care for other people, especially when they are hurt. Christian Hawley. The best thing my mom ever did for me is stopping my brother from hitting me all the time. <laughs> by Quentin Schultz. And there is a footnote after that one stating the artwork on this entry was priceless. <laughs> the best thing my mom ever did for me is to raise me, Jacob Locke. The best thing my mom ever did for me is she makes my dad and me happy and peaceful, Kevin Hutko. The best thing my mom ever did for me was when she saved me from drowning. She jumped in quick, grabbed me, and pulled me up. And that was the best thing my mom ever did for me by saving my life from drowning. Chris Fetterman. The best thing my mom ever did for me is to help me when I hit my head off the sidewalk. She helped me when I got bit by a dog, too. Angel Himes. The best thing my mom ever did for me was to make me. I like myself because if my mom didn't make me, I don't know where I would be. So thank you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Danny Griggis. As Art Linkletter would say, <laughs> the kids say the darndest things. At this time, my dear friends, my fellow counterpart in many of these escapades, and the founder of this lovely event, the Honorable Mayor Dennis Kane. It's the last thing. Thank you, Chief Grudy. Uh, I'm going to be very brief because I don't think I could say it any more meaningful or any better than the kids said tonight. But if I could, in my very brief remarks, like to, I'd follow up on what Danny Griggis said. Fortunately, I don't have to read these entries. I have a nice group of women that get together and pick these. And I, I never really read them until after they're done. But Danny Griggis has said, I thank my mom, or the greatest thing my mom did for me was to make me. And I think most people looking at that would say what he meant was, conception, birth, boom, there it is. But I think motherhood goes so much more beyond that. As a father, I, I can't really say for sure, but as motherhood, motherhood never ends. And when Danny says, I thank my mom for making me, hate to tell you, kid, it's a continual process. It's gonna keep going and going. In December, my mom found out about something that I did in my junior year of high school, and she was really mad at me. And I said, Mom, I'm going to be 52. You can't ground me. It was 30-some years ago. Get over it, Mom. But I don't, I don't think that motherhood ever ends. And when Danny said that, I thank my mom for making me, and I say it's a continual process, we're constantly being shaped and molded by our mothers. It's an ongoing thing. Simple things, learning to talk, learning to walk. Mom's there for us. Tying our shoes, learning to write, crying when we go out the door to school. It's, a mom's job, it's, it's tough. It's a letting go thing, but it's a holding on thing. And all of us should be eternally grateful for the love, the guidance, the care, and the understanding that our mothers have given us. And in closing, I want to thank the kids for their wonderful entries. They did a great job this year. Thank you, Dennis. And before we close out with benediction, a personal thank you for you, the parents, that take the time to have the kids do this kind of information. Without you parents behind the kids pushing them, smacking them off the back of the heads and kicking their butts, we would not have such a lovely event today. 
closing this lovely service this afternoon, Pastor Dana once again with our benediction. Awesome day, awesome time here. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you again, Pastor. In just about three weeks, we will gather here again for the annual Memorial Day service. We invite all to attend and pay tribute to all of those that have kept this country safe, especially with the unrest in the world today. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night and a safe trip home. Do I stop it now?